In this video, let's learn how to make construction animation using this tool. The animation nodes add-on is a node tree which can help you do the things you see now on screen. So today, we will do a simple building assembly with it. The site to download this tool is down in the description. So go there, and download the zip file to get started. I will work on this building, and we will do something like this animation. For the building I'm using, we did make it on this channel, so if you're interested in the modeling process, you can check it out, and I will leave a link to download this file. You can also work with anything you have, since the process is the same. I already have the add-on running on my Blender 3.51, and you can go to the add-on setting to set it up it as usual. One thing we need to do in any project is to separate any joined components, as in here, I have a couple of objects such as those bars on the building along with the windows that are joined together, so I need you to select the similar ones, then hit Shift H to isolate them. We can from here select everything in edit mode and hit P to separate the loose parts, this will make each bar alone. Next, we need to select everything in object mode then hit Ctrl A to apply transforms on all of them. After that, go to the object menu and set the original to mass center. This way we get the tool running correctly. Now we can put those objects in a new collection to work on the building piece by piece. A similar process is needed for any other joined object, so I will do the same for the windows and the railing. Isolate the windows if you're following with us, then separate the loose parts, hit Ctrl A to apply transforms, and set the original to mass. Once I put the windows in a new collection, I will select all the doors and place them in the same one called windows. I hide each collection I made to keep the view simple and you should do the same in any project. Working on it one by one will be easier and much faster. Again, we have the railing on balconies, so do the same with it. Separate the loose parts, apply transforms, and set origin to object mass. Then place all the objects in a new collection. To start using the animation node, I will go with the right part of the building first, it is a couple of floors along with the main block. One thing to not forget is the balcony glass rail, so do the same process with it, and place it in a new collection. I will go back to the right part of the building, select all the objects there, place them in a new collection if you haven't by now, and make sure to apply transforms then set the original to mass. Once you're done with all the previous steps, and while the objects on the right are selected, press N to open the animation nodes tab and hit new, we can name this to anything we want and hit OK. The two options on the top, the initial and the index are of no use to us, so turn them off, hit this button from current transforms, then hit it again to make the ID key for the collection. To add the nodes, Open a new workspace and switch it to animation node, 
then hit new to add a new node tree, what we need here is very simple, first we need to assign the collection for the objects on the right, to do that go to add, object, and select the collection info node, in this node we can assign the collection, in my case it's called right part, then we need a node called matrix output, you can find this last one in the object tab or hit shift a and search for it, we also need a node called object id key to add the key we made earlier with the add-on, so look for it. We can assign the key in this last node, to connect those three, first the collection all object slot will go into the matrix output top plug. The same collection slot will go into the id key input. And the key matrix slot will link to the matrix in the output node. Maybe sounds a bit confusing but is a triangular shaped connection. Once we done with those three, we need another node called matrix offset. This will help us transform the objects to do the animation. So search for it and place it on the orange line. This last one, as in any transform node, has the three main things, location rotation and scale transformation, and I will go with only the location for this part. Increase the Z value to move the objects up. And the fall off will control their movement, for that we need two extra nodes that goes in the fall off input, one is the delay fall off, and plug it via color, the other is the time info. This last one will go into the delay time as shown, we also need an invert node right before the fall off input, to set the motion from top to original position and not the other way, Now one thing I didn't get or I don't know if this tool can control, and that's the falling order for objects in the same tree, like in here, the block should fall after the floors, but I couldn't get it to be in order, so I separate the block from this animation, and keyframed it alone, and we will see that later. Let us continue with the windows for now, select all the objects in the windows collection and hit new to add an id key, then hit from current transform. In the animation node area, we can name the first node tree to keep things organized, then add a new one for the windows. After that, we just need to copy the same nodes we add earlier, and paste them here, then change the collection and the ID key to match every new collection we need to animate. The remaining are up to you, control the animation speed with the delay node or the object location.
with the wood part, the process is the same, add a new ID key for the wood collection, then copy the same nodes to a new tree, and change the collection info name with the ID key to set up a new animation for those bars. You can increase the animation frame number or control it with the delay and the duration. I ended up with around 180 frame in my animation and it rendered around 12 minutes with 3 seconds per frame. So that's fine for my machine. Now if I want to animate the bottom mesh without using the node animation tool, one of the ways to do that is with boolean, so let me add a cube first to works as a cutter. Scale it around the bottom part and make it view as a wire to see the mesh inside. Select the mesh, go to modifiers to add a boolean, select the wire cube as a cutter object, then let us animate the cutter location to reveal the mesh at the start. Hit I to set a keyframe on location at frame 1, then go to around frame 8, move the cutter up to reveal the mesh, and hit I again to add another location keyframe there. The block on the right we mentioned earlier, I will keyframe it on both rotation and scale. So make sure to get it out of the animation node collection. First see when the falling animation ends for the right side, then using an empty, we can parent it to the block to easily keyframe its motion. Once you selected the mesh then the empty, hit Ctrl P to set the empty as a parent object, now whatever transform we do on the empty, it will apply to the mesh, so first in its original position, hit I to add a rotation scale keyframe, then go back a bit on the timeline, rotate it around and scale it to zero, then hit I again to add another keyframe. We can after that control the speed of the animation by moving the keyframes apart.
I did include the glass face in the falling animation when I did mine, so we can just separate it from the mesh, then add it back to the right side collection. For the blocks on the left side, we can animate them using basic keyframes, and the same process can be done with the animation node, so I will select all the parts on the left, place them in a new collection, and make sure the original points are on mass center, then let's add a new ID key for this collection. With this one, we don't need the delay or the time info in the fall off, and we will use the rotation and scale in the offset matrix node rather than the location, set the Z rotation on 90 and make the scale on 0 for all axes, the fall off will do the rest, and to control the animation we will need a new node called controller fall off. Plug it via color to the offset matrix. Finally, we need to assign an object in the controller, an empty, to control the reveal of those parts. So add one, and scale it around to fit the left side. Once you assign the empty in the controller node, move the empty up to reveal the mesh. If you move the empty and nothing changed, Check the scene options on the side panel inside the animation node. We don't need this option in the final render since we're gonna keyframe the empty, still just to show you in the viewport. Now as before, select the empty, and press I to add two location keyframes to complete your animation. And that's it in general, I did animate the glass railing with another boolean modifier, and add couple of lights to the scene to lit it up, the render settings is quite simple, 128 samples and enable all the things you see on screen, we did make a full tutorial for every lighting to improve your renders, so check it out and set up an output files for your PNG sequence, you can after that go back and make them into a video or use any editing program to make that happen. To this we reach the end of this video, hit the like button if you're still here, and tell me your thoughts and comments down below, see you guys next time, stay sharp, goodbye.